Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Chulu Longcorn. I'm here with Yahaha doing these quick tutorials to show you how to set up basic interactivity. Today, we'll be going over the move component. With the move component, you can help players reach new heights or level up the challenges they face in a space. To demonstrate the move component, I've selected the stylized desert template, as it gives us plenty of opportunities to show off how we can use the move component in our spaces. Let's get moving by opening the resource box and choosing the translation agency asset. We can use the translation agency asset to move the player around and get them to inaccessible locations. For example, the player cannot reach the top of this tall mushroom shaped rock. Let's utilize the translation agency asset to get them there. In its default configuration, the translation agency doesn't get the player where we want it to. So let's shift the relative position points to 0, 12, 0, which will allow the platform to travel right to the top of the rock formation, as indicated by the move component positioning gizmo. Next. Let's change the stay times and move speeds to change how the translation agency works and how it interacts with the player. Now the platform reaches the top of the mushroom rock and the player can ride it there. Step off, look around, and ride it back to the ground. Nice. We can add a second position, which will still be relative to the start position. So let's do that now and set the point to negative 12, 7, negative 4. Let's also change the stay time to 3 and the move speed to 4 to give us a bit of time at each stop. Now the translation agency takes the player to two rock formations where the player may get off and then returns back along the same path to the ground again. Finally, let's turn this into a circuit by adding a third relative position of 0, 0, 0 and changing the looping mode type to one way. In this configuration, the player can ride the platform to each rock formation in turn, but then take a more direct path back to the starting point. Okay, now let's use the transverse roadblocks asset to create a moving obstacle. By placing the asset here behind the window rock, we can create a blocking element to the natural doorway formed by the rock formation. If we change the relative position point, the asset will slide out of the way. Let's set it to negative 8, 0.5, and 0, which moves it completely out of the doorway. And since the looping mode type is set to two-way by default, it moves back and forth intermittently blocking and opening the passage. To add an extra challenge, we can adjust the stay times and move speeds. Let's set the stay times to 0.3 and increase the move speeds to 7. Now we can see that the roadblock moves much faster and waits much less at each position. This makes it more difficult to move through the doorway, requiring the player to run to get through. Another useful move-enabled asset is the elevator door asset. Let's place the elevator door asset here to create a doorway which the player must open to move between the rocks. The elevator door asset's move component is set to the touched by player trigger condition by default. So when the player touches the object, it moves out of the way, making it a door which opens automatically. Now let's look at adding the move component to an object in a space. We can add the move component to any object in our space to create a creative interactive environment. For example, we can use the move component to create a natural rock bridge that builds itself when the player approaches a gap. Let's start by duplicating this rock and adding the move component. Since the second rock is duplicated in the exact same position as the first rock, until the rock moves, they look like a single rock. Now let's set the move component trigger condition to on enter, set the start position stay time to zero, the relative position point to zero, zero, three point three, the relative position stay time to 10, and the looping mode type to two-way. These settings will cause the duplicated rock to move into position in the gap. Now we'd need to set up the trigger, making sure it is in a position the player will walk through. 
Be sure not to allow the trigger to touch any other object, otherwise it will trigger as soon as we begin play. And boom! Once the player enters the trigger, the second rock moves, making it look like the original rock is duplicating itself into the gap. Next, if we duplicate the rock we just modified, we'll also duplicate the associated move component and trigger. Then we'll just have to make a few adjustments to the move component and set up its trigger. So let's move the trigger to the leading edge of rock 12, set the trigger condition to on exit, and then set the relative position point to negative three, one, negative two. This will set the rock to move into the gap on the other side so the player can cross to the next rock. And now we have a complete duplicating rock bridge using just the move component. As you can see, the move component can be used to move anything you wish from one point to another within your scenes. Use it to create a dynamic, interactive space, challenging and fascinating your players in many interesting and exciting ways. That's all for this tutorial, but we still have several more elements to cover. So, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials tutorials. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.